Yo, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to a brand new video. Sorry for taking such a long break, I've just had a lot on recently, but I thought it's about time to make a new upload. Today's video is going to be focused on tips and tricks and free assets and stuff like that for people who are wanting to learn the manipulation style or are beginners or newcomers to the style. So to start today's video off, first thing I'm going to go over is basically saying that manipulation is one of the hardest styles to get into. So one thing that I would say to everyone that is wanting to get into the style is that you need to have patience because it is quite hard to understand lighting, shadowing, like perspective. It's just not an easy style to just pick up and master really quickly takes time, patience, and lots and lots of practice. So for the first tip, I'm going to give out some of the best places that I find inspiration when it comes to getting sort of the creative juices and ideas and stuff like that flowing for creating an original art piece, artwork, design, whatever you guys want to call it. So the best places that I've found is obviously Behance being a portfolio website. You see lots of people's work on there. Uh, super big professional creatives are on there. And it's really great to take inspiration and just, um, you know, see some new artwork and get your own ideas flowing. Um, Art Station is another really great one, super amazing artists on there and especially for manipulation there is some crazy talented matte painting artists on there, it is really really good. Uh, also I would use DeviantArt, that's amazing too, Pinterest and Instagram are also really good as well. I will leave all the links in the description to these websites and other websites that I'll be mentioning further down in the video. Now the second tip of the video is try to stray away from using Google Images as a source for images or stocks. For your artwork. The reason I say this is because a lot of them are subject to copyright and also they are other people's work that is just linked from other websites which Google just sort of grabs and puts there for you guys to look at and it's kind of deceiving how you may think it's just a stock image when really it's someone else's work and then you grab that and try to use it in your own you know it's just sort of one uh, as an artist myself I sort of find that like hard to do like to steal other people's art and then use it in my own to call it like my own art you know what I mean so try to stray away from using Google because one, you could get into copyright troubles which no one wants to get into and also you could be grabbing other people's work without even knowing. Now I'm not saying don't use Google at all. There is definitely some great um, like things you can find on Google and resources and stuff like that but just be careful and when you're going to look for stock images I would stray away from using Google for that but Google can be useful for many other things. Third tip of the video is my go-to websites for extremely high quality images that are all royalty free. So these websites I use pretty much daily when designing. First up we've got Pexels, then Unsplash, Invital Elements. Now Invital Elements is obviously paid, it's a massive website that lots of people know about but it is paid so it isn't free but it is really really helpful and I would highly suggest it if you guys can save up some coin and invest into it because it is a great investment. Uh, obviously Google as well, but I don't use that um, as much, so that's more of like a, just a pretty obvious one, but I don't use it like crazy amounts. Uh, Texture Labs and Pixel Bay. All the links to those websites will be down in the description. Another tip for you guys is to always make sure that your layers are made as smart objects. I cannot stress this enough as this was a mistake that I made earlier when I was beginning in manipulation is... I left my layers rasterized and didn't make them smart objects so when I would move, resize or warp, anything like that, it would instantly just wreck the resolution. Like It completely ruins the resolution of your image and it just looks horrible and you can't go back and it's just, it's, it's horrible, it sucks. So the best thing to do is keep smart objects on pretty much every layer as they hold resolution better. You can hide and change layer styles from layer to layer. There's just so many more advantages to having it as a smart object. If you guys don't know how to do it, I'll just show it now. Super easy, you just right click, go convert to smart object and you are literally done. This little object will pop up in the bottom right corner of your layer and then that is it. Now everyone knows that lighting is a huge part of manipulation. Is the difference between a good and bad design. People who have mastered lighting can convert an image that looks okay to amazing with just a few lighting techniques and layers literally. So my go-to for lighting is the hue and saturation adjustment layers. The reason I say hue and saturation is so good is because one you can change the hue of your colors so you can go back and forth and go from a red to a green to a yellow and just change it back constantly also can change the saturation and the lightness and you can also by clicking the colorize button on the bottom right make it so that it is one color only and then from there adjust your colors accordingly for your highlights and shadows or whatever you're using it for 
Combine hue and saturation with the blend if and you will create some amazingly accurate lighting that can be toned from super harsh to blended in extremely well with your subject. If you guys don't know what blend if is, it is in your blending options when you pull up your FX styles. From here what you guys can do is go down to the two sliders being this layer and underlying layer. You can grab the sliders and hold alt on them and then that will cut them in half. And from there what you can do is drag them up and down uh, either making the shadows disappear or the highlights disappearing on the underlying layer or the layer that you are on. This can be extremely helpful when doing multiple layers of lighting on different subjects that you want to be on different sort of tones and brightnesses and it is super super helpful for all that kind of stuff. Now when it comes to your techniques for shadows I would say try to stray away from using just a basic black brush. You'll get more color and tone accurate shadows using adjustment layers such as curves, exposure and levels as they will darken and work in line with the colors of the layer they are applied to. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and a comment if you guys would like to see more videos like this. This video is pretty much made off of a thread that I earlier posted on Twitter, which I then thought would probably be better to put into a video. There's some other people that also said making a video would be more helpful, so I thought I might as well do it just because the Twitter thread is like just words and stuff and some people are more visual learners so I thought a video is definitely a great idea. I finally found some time for it so here we are. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.